previous videos, we've looked at identifying possible designs. We've looked at uh, kind of mind mapping and doing our first investigations. We've then gone on and produced a design specification. Those two together, if you remember, are worth 20 marks. We're now moving into the, the beginning to design section. So we're in AO2, design and make prototypes that are fit for purpose. Today, I'm going to be looking at section C, which is generating design ideas. So these are our first, what we've always called initial ideas. I'm only going to go partway through it today. So although there's 20 marks available, what I'm showing you today would not be sufficient for 20 marks. It's just the beginning. Um, I would say it's only going to be about half to a third of what you need to produce for that. Okay, so we're going to look through. So we've done so far our target market. We've investigated them. We've looked at some existing products briefly. We've then done some primary research into what our client needs and the target market. That includes a questionnaire using a website and actually um, speaking to the people. Then we've produced a design brief. Uh, the design brief is our statement of intent, what we're going to do. So I know that I'm making a prototype kitchen organizer and I know that it's going to focus on the ages of five to 10. And I know this is about helping people to um, eat healthily. Um, so it's a part of improving healthy lifestyles. Okay, I've given myself some starting points. So I now know from my next steps that I'm going to do some design sketches, which will lead me into a few models. Okay. Um, I've got a specification completed over here. So although I'm not going to go through this now, when I come to writing my notes, and when I'm thinking about my designs, I'm making sure I refer back to this specification. Okay, so that's it in a bit more detail if you want to freeze on that. And then we're into section C. I'm going to just get myself a highlighter for this uh, because I want to be able to highlight some key points. And right, so we're doing exploring a range of possible ideas what that means is you can't just come up with one idea and go that's it but do make sure you're linking back to your brief okay they're looking for flair which is about being creative they're looking for things which are different that's originality and it says take risks so don't be frightened of coming up with a daft idea that doesn't work because that's how you explore ideas so do take some risks make it inflatable make it gigantic make it fold up make it tiny Make it expand when you add water to it. Who knows? Take some risks. Okay. Now here's, I think, a variety of techniques. I'm going to be going through drawing today. Uh, but there's remember, there's modeling and there's videoing and all sorts of stuff that you can do. Um, and here's a key point. You're not rewarded for the quantity of design ideas. Um, but whether or not you meet the contextual challenge, that's your original design brief. In this case, it's the healthy lifestyles um, brief. Okay, now quantity of design ideas. Now, obviously, if you only come up with two design ideas, that's not good enough. What this means is that you need to come up with six, 12 different design ideas that you then develop one of, not 16 or 20 or 24. You know, you're looking at two or three pages of design ideas, and that's plenty before you develop it. Okay, uh, experiment and avoid design fixation. And design fixation is if, if you keep doing the same thing again and again, right? So if I look really specifically at our mark criteria here, okay? Top end, uh, function, aesthetics, and innovation. Do something different, make sure it works, make sure it looks good, okay? Um, try and be creative. Right. Now, remember, full account, what that means is you're thinking about ongoing investigation. So, like I say, you haven't just finished your target market and finished your existing products and that's it. You keep on doing some investigation. If you want to find something out whilst you're doing it, have a look for it. Um, don't forget to test your design ideas by asking people. Right. Extensive experimentation. What that means, although it says not lots and lots of different ideas, that's experimenting lots of different ways. That's models and design sketches, possibly some CAD um, possibly some clay or polymorph or something like that. Okay, an excellent communication. That's verbal, visual, and written communication. So drawings, notes, and talking to people. Okay, wide range of techniques. Now that's the top end. Imaginative use of different design strategies. So that's our modeling, that's collaborating and stuff like that. Okay, so actually, providing we're doing lots of different design ideas and we're doing them in different ways, you can you can hit these marks just by making sure you write notes and describe what you're doing and why. I've got here 
is a section where I'm looking at um, some similar existing products that when I did some searching into what children use to cook, this is the sort of product that I found. Um, and I obviously there's others, but I selected a few that I thought were appropriate for me. So I quite like the idea of these sort of the kit. Having a slow moment with the highlighter. I quite like the idea of some sort of cut glove, although actually I don't think that's necessary. I think this is more for people with, with particular needs. Um, most children of the target market that I'm doing would be able to manage without having to have that. I like the idea here of the ergonomic peeler. thought that looked quite fun. Um, and I thought this this bowl on a tipping stand, it's not really what I want to do, but I thought it kind of gives an idea where you, you're creating something that makes it work well. So look, Cooking healthy food with children. Products that are currently available, showing I'm doing some research. I'm talking about colors and they're not like toys. I like the fact that I've got this ring that holds the bowl steady. Quite like the idea of it being a sucker. I was thinking about magnets or clips or something, but a sucker's a good idea. Um, got the tipping bowl mechanism. But again, if I'm thinking about my specification, it's too big, uh, because I've got to fit into a drawer or a cupboard. And then I'm talking about ergonomics, which are these ones here, and thinking about children's hands. So there's some research to do. Uh, I'm going to concentrate my first ideas onto a product that keeps everything contained in one area, so I know what I'm going to do my drawings about. And it's probably going to be a tray or a worktop organizer. Then I'm going to talk to my client. So I'm giving my next steps. I'm explaining what each stage is going to lead me into. Okay, we had a sneak preview a minute ago of these design sheets. So um, We'll have a look at the designs and then talk about the notes that I add into those afterwards. Right, so in a second I'm gonna show you um, me. I know what I'm doing. I know I'm making um, a, a hygienic and healthy cooking station for young children. So I'm gonna do some design sketches. Bear in mind, these are very, very rough. These are quick. Um, it, I think it's taken me about 30 minutes to do this design sheet. Um, you might need to do this a bit more neatly. Likewise, if you're not very good at drawing, you know, just draw quickly. This is the sort of design sheet I do when I'm talking to people and talking with people. So these are the sorts of sketches where I'm not being too precious about them. I'm doing them nice and fast to get my ideas down on the paper. And later on, I will choose one or two of them and I'll draw them up a little bit more neatly. But for now, we'll have a look at these being created.
So here's the completed design sheet. You saw me sketching those a minute ago. Um, I speeded that up by 10, so I think it took about three minutes. What I didn't do, because I wanted to make sure you could read my writing, is I didn't write my notes on it by hand. Quite often if I was do, doing a design sheet like that, I would actually be handwriting my notes as I go. Um, but what I've done, you can see how quick and um, hesitate to use the word scruffy, but you know they're, they're nice loose drawings and I'm talking about the key points. I'm not writing a great big essay next to each one. You might decide to write more. It might, might suit you to explain each of your designs in more detail. What I've tended to do is pick out the key points and at the end of it, I've written a summary. Okay, so I've got a fold-out tray and worktop organizer. Simplicity was important so that it was easy. I've talked about the price, which was one of my specification points. Hygienic materials like stainless steel and silicon which are common kitchen materials, and it's easy to clean and hygienic, suiting my target market. Okay, so it's a, then I'm explaining it. It's a tray that the food prep is done on top of. Um, places where a bowl and scales might be locked. I think that's something I'll find out whether people want or whether that would be a pain in the neck. Um, and I've also talked about a feature. I think there's a scoop um, which collects things at the end which I think is quite a nice little design feature. I'm keeping it simple to encourage people to use it. And remember, I'm coming back to my target market of being modern and stylish. Okay, the design context was about being healthy. So my notes kind of deal with that. So this I would suggest is one of two first ideas sheets. So my next one might be um, looking at some different shapes that would be better for that maybe taking the bowl out of the equation or having having modules that clip in so I'll, I'll do another set of design sheets at some point but essentially what you're doing is one of these plus another one to give you a wide enough range to explore so that would be four to eight to twelve different designs um yeah a couple of hours work so good luck with that